Is this thing on? Does this, this thing work? Can it hear me? Can <laughs> Testing, testing. One, two, three. <coughs> yum, yum, yum. I love rumble. Hello guys, it is me, Jerk Gaming here, and welcome to something I was a little bit passionate about talking about. So remember that poll that I did um, a while back about me talking about, hey, there's a drama video that I wanted to do and I've been thinking about doing it for months. Well, this isn't the video necessarily, but think of this like a practice video. I'm kind of trying to practice my commentary or trying to practice, you know, talking about things that I've kind of wanted to talk about. You get the gist. Okay, well with that out of the way, I'm already messing up my English. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video of what I wanted to talk about. So before we get straight into the point or straight into the thing that I'm going to primarily talk about today, let me at least bring up why I wanted to talk about this. Number one, I have a strong feeling that there are a good handful of you guys that are watching actually don't know what I'm going to talk about, nor have an idea of what dementia actually even is. And for those of you guys who just happen to be doing a school project about dementia, well then hey, here's your lucky video and you can use this as a reference. Also number two, it could just be me, but recently this year I've been finding a lot more people that have been making fun of old people with this type of mental disease. And the one that kind of takes me off the most is the most recent event that has happened. This incident of this 19 year old woman that married an 89 year old man, or somewhere by the round of that age. I'm pretty sure it was 89 at least, but 89 year old man. If it wasn't the Super Smash Bros drama that's been happening this year that has got me tipped over the edge and has made me relatively depressed or angry, then it's definitely this situation that's made me, um, I wouldn't say really depressed, but really upset with everyone. If the idea of a 19 year old woman marrying an 89 year old man sounds crazy enough, well, don't worry, you're a normal person, it is absolutely crazy and it, it doesn't really have a good reason behind it either. But go ahead and take a look at this little screenshot that got leaked from a Twitter group chat from back in July of 2020 here, okay? So, I'd like to stay for a few more months, at least if I can. Wait, so marriage within the next, like, year? I didn't realize it was that serious. Michael, if we get married, I would be the sole person who gets his inheritance. So apparently this 89 year old man who apparently is diagnosed with dementia apparently has a rich amount of money or an extreme amount of money and this 19 year old woman who I think was like a nursing or a home nurse or something like that on that occupation, I don't know, happened to have heard that this old man had an extreme amount of money, so much money that she went she went ballistic over it. I'm gonna piss and, and vomit on myself, Lee has so much money I've literally been homeless before. And then she decided, yo, hey, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna marry this man, and when he dies, I'm gonna take all of his money, and then I'm gonna marry someone so much better. Even made fun of his dementia as well. And not just her too, but so many people I know on social media just really like to make fun of people who have dementia. And it's very likely that, just simply put it, they don't know what dementia is, and they don't know what it's like to go through it. Like a wise man says in the comments on Instagram, people like to make fun of things they don't understand. Some random anonymous user I found on Instagram who typed that comment. And again, that's one of the sole reasons why I'm making this video. In the hopes that you guys can, number one, get a better understanding of dementia, number two, reduce the amount of people making fun of dementia, and number three, kind of shed some light on this album that I found. By some miracle, in fact. This album that not only has uh, changed my experience with the world, but has probably changed my point of view of everything at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you my knowledge and my experience from listening to the album Everywhere at the End of Time. Before we go over to the album, let me give you a quick definition of the word dementia, or just dementia in general. Dementia is a general term for loss of memory, language, problem solving, and other thinking abilities that are severe enough to interfere with daily life. Alzheimer's is the most common cause of disease. Not a specific disease, dementia is a group of conditions characterized by impairment of at least two brain functions, such as memory loss and judgment. Symptoms include forgetfulness, limited social skills, and thinking abilities so impaired that it interferes with daily functioning. So yeah, in basic terms, dementia is basically your brain just regressing. And regressing. And regressing. 
and then regressing to the point that ultimately you die. And what makes dementia such a scary disease is that unlike most other diseases that seem relatively weird or uncommon, for a disease I haven't even learned about until like recently, just a few months ago, it's actually relatively common. More than at least 3 million US citizens have a case of dementia per year. Every single year, an American like you has dementia at around the age of 65 or older. The best example I can give about dementia, other than using the album himself, is from the works of this one man named William. I'm not sure about his full name, but you know, just, just call him William, because that, that's, that is his name. It's first or last, I don't remember. William was an artist back in like the 1900s, like some, you know, some, you know, the times around like 1967, all that types of stuff. At a relatively old age, somewhere around like 1995, 1996, he was diagnosed with dementia, and I'm not really sure what was the case or how it happened, but regardless, he was diagnosed with it. So William, Mr. William, decided to do a scientific experiment or an art portrait experiment about his dementia and decided to document on what his dementia does to his portrait artwork. He would go up to a mirror and then draw himself and see what his brain can depict from it. And he did a series of multiple pictures, but I'll be showing you this image that gives a best description of how it went over the years. You can see that in the very first portrait back in 1967, how, you know, this is basically him and all that types of stuff. And then him getting dementia in 1996, him looking at himself at the mirror and drawing what he can draw. And then eventually with each and every picture that kept going and going all the way to 2000, you can tell he doesn't even have a memory of what he even looks like. He doesn't know who he is. All he remembers is, hey, I'm alive. I wanted to bring about this portrait of art because it kind of gives a good reminisce about how it is with the album Everywhere at the End of Time. Everywhere at the End of Time was made by the artist The Caretaker, aka Mr. Kirby. Mr. Kirby, aka The Caretaker, took about like, I think, around three years in 2016, all the way to 2019, developing the album Everywhere at the End of Time, which was divided into six stages. Each of the stages depicting a musical format of what it's like to have dementia. Stages one through six. So before we actually start talking about the album and its entirety, I should probably at least tell you how I actually found this album, and my experience actually listening to it. One terrible morning where I was tired, like always, going to a college class on Zoom, which was, you know, a math class and all that types of stuff, and you know, me being the boy I am who's always distracted and can't keep his mind on things straight, I decided to go on Twitter. Ah, Twitter. Everyone's favorite site. Let's see what's on Twitter today. Oh. Um, sure thing. But anyways, there was an account that I was following that I'm pretty sure most of you guys also follow if you exist on Twitter, which if you actually don't, then good for you, by the account name of images that proceed to unfortunate events, or something on the lines of those lines. Did I just say something on the lines of those lines? Wow, my... My English, bro. Anyways, on one miracle day, I decided to wake up on... I decided to go check on what was new on the account, or, you know, what was new on my feed. And I saw something pretty interesting. Usually, the images that proceed to unfortunate events would have an image or a frame of something that would have happened, and it could literally be anything, of an unfortunate event. Whether it be from a kid's movie that you have watched, or just literally anything you've seen on the internet, popular or unpopular. And by some miracle on that morning, the next image happened to have been... this. I don't even know what this was. What even is that? Is that like some like toilet paper, but like as actual paper? Why do I see multiple pages? What is this image? So of course I decided to deep dive down into the rabbit hole that is what that image was about. And that image happened to have been about the album. That was about everywhere at the end of time. I was originally going to just sit down and listen to it until I realized something very peculiar, something that caught my eye, something that I'm still in disbelief to this day, despite the fact that I have listened to this album and its entirety not too long ago. The album is bloody 6 hours and 30 minutes long. Oh yeah, that's a long album. If you thought like 2 hours worth of music was long, pfft, I'm sorry bro, pfft, but you're wrong bro. Six hours and 30 minutes? That's where it's at, my dudes. That's where it's at. And it's no surprise either. This album, after all, did start in development back in like 2016 with stage one and two, all the way to 2019, finishing at stage six. And if you actually give these songs a listen to as well, you can definitely see the hard work that is put into these songs. And you can definitely see why they took a really long time. A really, really, really long time. 
And I'm also glad that I've happened to have found this album. Like, if it wasn't for it being found or be it being posted on my Twitter page or whatever, it would have definitely been overburied by, um... Oh, new Hungrybox video, okay. So with that out of the way, let me tell you my experience and my understanding of the entire album that is everywhere at the end of time. Good night, mate. Everywhere at the End of Time is made up of classical music all the way till stage 5 or stage 6, maybe even stage 4 if you want to get technical. And it's supposed to take in perspective of a man with dementia who is trying his best to remember old music. And you may recognize some of these old musics. For example, the very first song, It's Just a Burning Memory, is actually sort of a slow remix to one of a popular 1940s song, if that is the correct year, Hardix. But I won't be showing you the song because, you know, copyright. Stage 1, for the most part, is relatively tame. If anything, actually is insanely tame and will be the most tame compared to the entire album. But despite how tame the first stage is, it's divided into some pretty interesting song titles, I'll just say. The first song, reading, It's Just a Burning Memory. The next song, reading, We Don't Have Many Days. Some other songs, for example, like All That Follows Is True, The Loves of My Entire Life, My Heart Will Stop, enjoy. Listening to the first stage was kind of like going back to listening to classical music. Back in high school, I started actually getting into classical music, so something like this actually started to really fascinate me, and if it wasn't for my classical music taste, I probably may not have even listened to the entire album. While it's all fun and games, it is only the first stage. The first stage. Because after you're done with the first stage, you move on to the second stage. The second stage is actually kind of the same thing, except you can definitely tell there's something off. You can absolutely tell there's something off. In fact, in stage two, its description reads, The second stage is the self-realization and awareness that something is wrong, with the refusal to accept that. More effort is made to remember, so memories can be more long of form, with a little more deterioration in quality. The overall personal mood is generally lower than the first stage and at a point before confusion starts settling in. Keyword, confusion. Because that becomes a key part throughout the next four stages. Like I said, Everywhere at the End of Time is supposed to be made up of music from the perspective of an old man trying to remember his elongated hardship work and enjoyment of music. That did not make any sense, but whatever. So the first stage you can imagine is the old man already diagnosed with dementia, and the second stage is him just realizing that, oh wait, I have dementia. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Now again, it is the second stage. It's all fun and games until you get to the next stage. Honestly, it, it might as well be like that. Everyone's gangsta until the next stage plays. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, goodness me, this doesn't sound pleasant. The third stage should absolutely be the most clear that, uh, hey, something is, uh, something is definitely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Terrifyingly wrong. Uh, I don't, I don't like this type of wrong. Here we are presented with some of the last coherent memories before confusion finally rolls in and the grey mists form and fade away. Finest moments have been remembered. The musical flow in places is more confused and tangled. As we progress, some singular memories become more disturbed, isolated, broken, and distant. These are the last embers of awareness before we enter the post-awareness stages. Stage 3 is basically a, hey, warning, warning, you're about to enter the dead zone of uh, dementia. You, you, uh, you better find that medication, bro. You better find the cure to dementia, because uh, it's, uh, it's not going to be good. And the third stage is not kidding when it says it's confused and, you know, disturbed, isolated, broken, and distant, and distinct, and, you know, tangled, and all types of stuff. And I, it, it really means that when it says it. Because unlike the first two stages, they were more ordered. Because unlike the first two stages where all the songs were in order and never seemed to have actually overlapped each other and seemed to have been relatively normal for the most part, the third stage is... How do I say not normal, but make it sound more interesting? Oh, um, tangled, I guess? 
Interestingly enough, in the third stage, there are actually a lot more songs compared to the first and second stage, some of them lasting only a minute to five minutes long. But interestingly enough, every song that plays, every so often, when it ends, it just, for whatever reason, just dead stops, just mid-song, and then just goes right into the next song, for some strange reason? And this, for some strange reason, could be explained by this. It is the third stage after all. Dementia is really kicking in, so you're probably having a way more hard time trying to remember things such as, you know, music, which is something that everyone can remember. Unless you listen to rap. It's not like the first two stages where, even though there was dementia, the only thing you were really forgetting is exactly what the song sounds like. It still sounded like music, but it was just a bit off. It was just slightly off, but it was still music for the most part. And in the first stage, it was actually relatively nice. Third stage, like I said, because it's becoming a lot more harder to remember things, it starts getting to a point where you're going from some classical music that just sounds really weird and really off, to eventually it starts to become just... What even is this track? What... what does this reference at this point? Did I even listen to the song? Why does it sound so different? And again, it's all fun and games until you get to the next stage, and oh my goodness, when you get to the fourth stage, there is no turning back. Alright, we're on stage four, uh, we are picking up some a bunch of red flags of stage four, this is, this is really starting to creep us out. Post-awareness stage four is where serenity and the ability to recall singular memories gives way to confusions and horror. It's the beginning of an eventual process where all memories begin to become more fluid through entanglements, repetition, and rep... Rupture? Rupture? I'm sorry. I, again, my English is bad. And if just listening to stage 4 doesn't already turn you off, or doesn't already, you know, get you, uh, really, really, really scared, the worst part about stage 4 is, unlike the first three stages, where they were about, like, 40 minutes, maybe 50 minutes at longest, the next, or should I say, the last three stages are usually around like an hour and a half long. So yeah, what you were hearing in stage four is what you would be hearing for an hour and a half, basically. Yeah, you would be hearing this monstrositous, ugly piece of music for a very, very, very long time. And interestingly enough, the last three stages are only divided into four songs and have it's kind of the strangest names. Unlike stage two, where it had titles as A Losing Battle is Raging, Misplaced in Time, The Way Ahead Feels Lonely, and in stage three, Back There, Benjamin, The Heart Breaks, Libid Delay, An Empty Bliss Beyond This World. Stage four, slash stage five and six, have the strangest of names. Stage 4 is only divided into 4 songs with practically the same names. Stage 4, Post-Awareness Confusions. And then the third song being titled Temporary Bliss State. And here's just, just, just the worst part. The worst part about it is that it's stage 4. It's bloody stage 4. If stage 5 is the next stage to this monstrosity, what does it even sound like? Oh. Oh my gosh, mom, help, I, I'm done, I don't want to listen to this anymore, <laughs> what's my mom's name at this point? <laughs> Post-awareness stage 5, confusions and horror, more extreme entanglements, repetition, and rupture can give way to calmer moments, the unfamiliar may sound and feel familiar, time is often spent only in the moment, leading to isolation. And the description isn't wrong either. From my experience of listening to this entire album and listening to these entire stages, it's kind of interesting to see that at the very beginning of me listening to these, you know, disturbingly creepy songs, eventually over time, when it hit like the second song, it actually started to become suspiciously a lot more normal. Normal. This is normal. This is what I've heard. For the past, who knows I've existed. 
This is what I heard in that one ballroom I was in with my wife. Yes, this song. There is nothing wrong. Stage 5 is undoubtedly the scariest in my opinion. I mean, again, ju just from listening to this piece, you can tell that the person, or the patient, or you, you know, diagnosed with dementia, is having a, uh, a mild heart attack. Listening to stage 5, you probably may be wondering what's even going on in the brain at this point. Well, there's something I did forget to mention about Alzheimer's dementia, or Alzheimer's, or dementia, or whatever the difference is, I don't even know. Dementia is caused by damage to or loss of nerve cells and their connections in the brain. Depending on the area of the brain that's affected by the damage, dementia can affect people differently and cause different symptoms. So from what you were hearing in stage 5, just imagine that. All the wires, all the nerve cells in your brain, all of a sudden, are going around different places they shouldn't even be going around. Imagine that some of them are just dead at this point. Imagining that you only have a few functioning nerve cells remaining. Imagine that. And then imagine the realization that you're only on stage 5. <sighs> what even is stage 6? Well, if stage 5 is the confusion and the entanglements and the absolute monstrosity of songs that have been kind of broken like Lego bricks, stage 6 is the aftermath. Post-awareness stage 6 is without description. The first song titling, A Confusion So Thick You Forget Forgetting. Second song, A Brutal Bliss Beyond This Empty Defeat. Third, Long Decline Is Over. And the fourth and final, Place in the World Fades Away. Stage six is honestly the most interesting. Stages 4 through 5 have been nothing but just nightmares of music, like things you would hear in your nightmares or a horror movie, and you just want to stop listening to it. And then stage 6, you just have... nothing. Practically nothing. You only have just weird, scary white noises for an entire hour and a half. Actually, no, change that. Uh, an hour and 25 minutes, because in the last 5 minutes, it actually plays this somber theme. This very sad and emotional theme that doesn't actually sound familiar. And I'm not going to actually play the theme for you guys. I actually want you guys to listen to the album or to listen to that part in particular to see what I'm trying to get at and to see, you know, how interesting it is. And what makes it interesting is that it's music. It's like, it's like somber, but like kind of calming and sad music coming from after a whole hour and 25 minutes worth of nothing but silence occasionally just this somber saddening music and then out of nowhere a whole minute of nothing but silence being a song or being an album about depicting dementia alzheimer's dementia or whatever stage six is basically the what happens when you ultimately forget practically everything at this point. Remember, like I said, dementia is, in a poor man's term, is basically your brain just regressing further and further and further and further and further until you die. So imagine stage six being just, you literally forgot everything. And then ultimately you're just waiting for your doom. That is your death, where your brain ultimately stops working and the somber music is basically the song that plays in your funeral. My experience listening to this entire album has been honestly kind of a an interesting experience. To listen to six and a half hours worth of classical music that ultimately becomes into nothing but just entanglements and nightmarish sounding themes and ultimately just nothing for an hour and a half. It was pretty interesting. If this is supposed to be an album depicting what it's like having dementia, it made me feel more sympathetic towards people with dementia. It made me see things differently. It made me realize that one day, all of us, including me, are going to have dementia, and it's going to suck, and it's going to really suck, and it's going to suck so bad, it, it's not going to be fun, honestly. 
and undoubtedly, if it's not the music that doesn't, you know, interest you into the album, then what probably may have, that you may have noticed, is the artwork of the albums. Each of the six stages have their own unique artwork album that depicts something that is related to the stage. Stage 1, for example, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but it's supposed to be like a newspaper that's kind of like rolled up or something. Again, this is supposed to depict an old man with dementia, so what he's probably going to remember is not just classical music, but back in the days where the way you would probably, you know, reach out to things that happened on the news was not only through television, but was also through newspapers. So it would make sense that an old man would probably remember something like reading a newspaper, along with some nice classical music. Stage 2 is probably one of the perfect examples of things that you know what this is, but you don't know how to describe it. Stage 2, to me, in my opinion, looks like a flower pot. That pot got mishmashed into something sort of unfamiliar, but familiar. Like, what even is this flower pot? This flower pot looks like as if it was, like, meant to be held with your hand. A small child's hand. And there's some woman on the right of it. And a man on the left. But they're both faceless for some reason. And what are they even walking on? Is this even a flower pot at this point? I'm pretty sure the flower pot's weird, morphed looking kind of ugh way is supposed to depict the idea that you understand what this is, but do you really understand what this is? You remember what a flower pot looks like, but do you actually remember what a flower pot looks like? Stage three, um, you know, to be completely honest, when I actually showed my cousins this artwork, they weren't even sure what this is. And from reading the description and from actually listening to the entire album, or the entire song, or the entire, you know, list of songs, or, you know, the entire stage, you know, whatever, I think I can actually get a better understanding of what this is. I think what this is, is literally just mist, or ugly looking mist, like entanglement, physical, ugly liquid looking mist. After all, stage three, it does talk about the idea of confusion fully rolls in, and the gray mists form and fade away. This could be the gray mist forming into something, forming into something that becomes so unfamiliar, or better yet, fading away and becoming something so... entangled. Stage 4 is probably the most interesting in my opinion. It's literally, at least from my eyes, a woman looking to the right with a blank face and blank hair and, you know, blank shoulders and... It's basically an, a woman with no face. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a reference to William's artwork of his dementia, scientific experiment, whatever, and that this is supposed to kind of reference the idea that you don't even recognize yourself. You can recognize the shape of yourself, but you can't really seem to understand what you look like, even when you look yourself in a mirror. Stage 5 is undoubtedly the strangest. I, like, even when I listen to the entire thing, even when I understand what stage 5 is, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. And you know what? I think that's the point. I think the point of Stage 5's album artwork is, it's supposed to look strange, and it's not supposed to look familiar at all. Like, what even is this? What even is this figure? Is that staircases? And if so, what even is that? Is that supposed to be some blocky version of Springs or something? Even though I've listened to the entire thing, I... Again, I... I don't even understand what this is. Is that a boulder right there? And what, just, is that an arm with a staff? Is it riding a horse? What is going on? And then stage six's artwork is literally just an empty blank canvas, or you know, some cardboard with tape for some reason on it. Being an album depicting dementia, I'm very positive that this artwork is supposed to symbolize the idea that stage six is the part where you ultimately have forgotten so much that your brain, or at least your memory, holds nothing. To a point where it's just empty. You don't even see any white. It's just an empty canvas. Some say it could just be a canvas that's just faced backwards and that's why you see the awkward looking tape or something. But even then, it's still correct in a way. I don't know. I mean, that is what's the point of the artwork albums. They're meant to be interpreted in some way. They're not meant to look familiar, but at the same time, they are meant to look familiar. I'll leave you guys' interpretation in the comments down below. If you guys want to figure it out yourself, then go right ahead, be my guest. Because trust me, I'm pretty sure if you start using that brain of yours, you'll go thinking down forever. So, anyways, in conclusion, what have I learned? 
Well, I've learned to appreciate the fact that I have memories and I can hold on to them for however long I feel like holding on to them. After listening to this, you know, album in general, it's kind of given me a scarce idea of what would happen if I had dementia. What would happen if you guys had dementia? What exactly would it be like? And like I said, this album probably fits perfectly of what it's like to have dementia. After all, some of the songs are meant to symbolize what, you know, your brain is doing, how your brain is thinking. And you know, as each stage passes by, your brain ultimately becomes so jambled up that you can't even think properly, and ultimately gets to the point where you ultimately forget either everything or just that one thing you were trying to remember. And in conclusion, I really hope you guys can understand dementia, and I really hope you guys can, you know, stop making fun of the, you know, mentally ill with dementia and all that types of stuff. And it was honestly a really fun ride to go through. So I think I've kind of pretty much covered everything I wanted to have covered in the album. Like I said, I've documented my entire experience or my entire, you know, watching and all that types of stuff on my Instagram. And I even have a highlight of it on my, you know, bio. So if you want to actually see my kind of, uh, you know, experience with the album, then go ahead and check out my bio. You'll probably enjoy it. Like I said, this is something that I kind of wanted to do for a while because this is something that I become over time more passionate about. And like I said, learning about dementia has kind of opened my eyes to things I never thought I would have ever learned about, nor have I ever thought would have ever existed. Real talk though, real talk, please kids, if you know someone who has dementia or if you've had a parent or a grandfather or grandmother or whatever that's experienced through dementia, I want you to be happy that you haven't yet, or better yet, be more appreciative during the time that you didn't have dementia, during the time that your family didn't have dementia, or whoever didn't have dementia, or whatever. And I am really sorry if you actually have experienced a family member with dementia, because I actually have too. This was during the time when I was like really young, like 13 young. I still consider that to be really young because, you know, I was a small boy, I didn't really understand anything. My grandmother was actually on her deathbed in the hospital, you know, and I remember the just, just how just, just wow. It was, it was actually kind of a heartbreaking moment the more that I think about it. I remember the one time when I went to my grandma and she, man, she looked so weak. She looked like she was just ready to die, ready to just go away. And the worst part was that was the second before last time I actually visited her. The last time I visited her, wow, just, just wow. She, she never responded to any of us. She never looked at us once and she only just faced the ceiling. Like I said, I didn't know what was going on because I was innocent, you know, I was 13, I wasn't that smart back then. And like I said, it was until like last month, maybe even a few months back, where I actually started learning about dementia and this album, that I finally understood what happened to my grandma. She went through dementia right then and there. And honestly, the more I think about it, this album and the whole entire experience of it probably showed me what my grandma was going through and probably also showed me what all your guys' grandmas have gone through. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video. I did not expect this to be this long of a video. In fact, I was honestly expecting it to be like 25 minutes or something, but you know, I like to ramble on. I like to talk about things and you know, all that types of stuff. If you actually enjoyed watching this video and if you actually learned about Alzheimer's dementia, Give it a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you had something you wanted to share about this subject as well. Please share it with your friends, like, honestly. <laughs> I really liked talking about this because this is something that I became really passionate about the more and the more and the more I kept learning about the album, and the more and the more and the more I kept learning about dementia as a whole. I'll see you guys in whatever we do next. Take care, God bless you guys, and may the ballroom remain eternal.